This is Mac OS Ken. Apple gets smacked down by a judge. Ming Chi Kuo thinks AI may save Apple Vision Pro. And reported changes for Apple's movie plans. It is Monday, the 30th of September. Bye, Dia. Bye, bye. Anyway, it's the last day of September. What do you want from me? I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from macOS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by 1Password Extended Access Management. Your solution for MDM and identity access management. Learn more at 1Password.com slash macOS Ken. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and then your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Apple's request for a delay in its never-ending epic case has not only been refused, it also came with a bit of rebuke. As part of the litigation, a piece from Engadget says the Cupertino company was ordered to turn over to the court documents related to changes made this year in the App Store. Those changes were theoretically made to comply with an injunction tied to the case. The order was made in early August with documents due in by today, Monday, the 30th of September. At the time, Apple said it would require reviewing 650,000 documents. Last week, the company said, turns out the number of documents that would require review was actually 1.3 million, so could we please have a couple of extra weeks? Worth noting, since the early August order, both Epic and Apple have been giving status updates to the court every two weeks, and yet this is the first time Apple has said anything about the number of documents doubling. That led to the judge in the case to declare no dice, followed by reading the Cupertino company the Riot Act. According to the judge, this information would have been apparent to Apple weeks ago. It is simply not believable that Apple learned of this information only in the two weeks following the last status report. On top of that, the piece has the judge indicating that the request calls into question the quality of Apple's reports and its intentions around complying in a timely manner. According to the judge, this is a classic moral hazard, and the way Apple announced out of the blue four days before the substantial completion deadline that it would not make that deadline because of a document count that it had surely been aware of for weeks hardly creates the impression that Apple is behaving responsibly. He does not sound happy. What's ahead for Apple in spatial computing? The answer is something more advanced, according to TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. The on-again, off-again Apple analyst hit medium on Friday with his expectations. They center on a better processor and Apple intelligence. According to the analyst, the new M5-powered Vision Pro... You heard me. The new M5-powered Vision Pro is expected to enter mass production in the second half of 2025. The main selling point will be the integration of Apple Intelligence with spatial computing. The major hardware change will be the processor upgrade to the M5, currently M2, to significantly improve computing power and ensure the best Apple Intelligence user experience. Other hardware specs and designs won't change much, which should help lower costs and price points. A lower price sounds good. It also sounds like the one thing just about everybody is expecting, except for, well, this is weird, except for Ming-Chi Kuo. After saying other hardware specs and designs won't change much, which should help lower costs and price points, the analyst says the price of the M5-powered Vision Pro may not change much. But Apple Intelligence will really sell it, or something. Quoting the analyst again, If the M5 Vision Pro can integrate something like OpenAI's Sora, it may elevate the user experience of the head-mounted display device to unimaginable levels. The impact of text-to-video AI models on the head-mounted display device experience will likely be more impressive 
than on existing mainstream consumer electronics. Yeah, okay, maybe, but at $3,500 to start, imagining is all most people are going to be able to do. Unless the 30-minute demo comes with a $2,500 rebate. I know, suddenly it sounds like I think this thing's going to fail. I do not. I think Apple is in this for the long haul. But people aren't passing on Apple Vision Pro because the experience isn't good. It doesn't just need killer apps. It needs people experiencing those apps, then telling other people who might be able to afford one. Anyway, that's my two cents. Hey, spend it on an Apple Vision Pro, huh? More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, 1Password Extended Access Management. Your staff is quick and resourceful. That's why you hired them. You give them a task, they get it done. Thing is, they may not be hip to why you have them do things the way you have them do them. You have certain apps and devices you want them to use. They know a quicker way with other apps and other devices. They do it their way, and everybody's happy. Except maybe your security people because they can't keep your workplace secure on apps and devices about which they don't know. That is where 1Password Extended Access Management comes in. It brings all those unmanaged devices, applications, and identities under your control, making sure that every user credential is strong and protected, every device is known and healthy, and every app is visible. 1Password Extended Access Management solves the problems traditional identity and access management and mobile device management miss. It's available now to companies with Okta and Microsoft Entra and in beta for Google Workspace customers. Your people want to do a good job. Let 1Password Extended Access Management help them do it safely. Check it out at onepassword.com slash macosken. That is the number one, onepassword.com slash macosken. Apple's latest medical push has made its way to the Great White North. A piece from 9to5Mac says Health Canada has given the green light to sleep apnea detection on Apple's relatively recent and truly recent watches. The sleep apnea detection feature is supported on the newest Apple Watch Series 10, according to the site, as well as the Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2. Two down, 148 plus to go, and quickly. While the feature has already been approved in the U.S., 9to5Mac says Apple has promised that sleep apnea notifications will be available in more than 150 countries and regions this month, this month ends in less than 24 hours, so seems possible that might get pushed a bit. Kind of an oops on my part. Apple TV Plus had a pretty big title hit at the end of the week last week. Mac Rumors ran a piece last Friday saying that the George Clooney, Brad Pitt, action comedy Wolves was hitting Apple TV Plus Last Friday. Oops. If you think Apple's release plans for Wolves, one week in the cinema, then straight to Apple TV Plus is a sign of things to come, a lengthy article from Bloomberg says, You are correct. After disappointing turns at the box office for Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Argyle, and Fly Me to the Moon... Bloomberg says future features from the Cupertino streamer will walk the way of the wolves. According to the report, Apple plans to use a similar approach with the next few titles on its calendar, including the World War II drama Blitz. Apple, which previously had intended to spend about a billion dollars annually on blockbusters for cinemas, won't return to the big screen with a wide, global theatrical release until June with F1, a film starring Brad Pitt as a former Formula One driver who returns to racing 
to mentor a rising star. The weird thing about this story, they've still got Apple spending about a billion dollars a year on feature films, though it'll be more films for less money per. According to the report, Apple will now focus on making about a dozen movies a year, most of them produced for less than $100 million, according to people familiar with the company's plans, who requested anonymity because they don't want to sleep with the fishes. I'm kidding, because they were not authorized to speak on internal matters. That means Apple's commitment to spend $1 billion annually on films won't change, but the makeup of the company's movie slate and release strategies will. Hey, you know what I've been watching lately? No, so I will tell you. I've been watching Bad Monkey. That's the Apple TV Plus Vince Vaughn detective. Uh, dramedy, maybe. Produced by Ted Lasso and shrinking producer Bill Lawrence. I'm only four episodes in. I will say it is funny. It has had one amazing twist so far. Kind of feels like it should be ending soon, and yet there are two more episodes due out for a total of ten. And I'm on number four. And it feels like it should be ending soon. I'm not saying I'm tired of it. I'm not. Quite the contrary. But the fact that I'm less than halfway through it and it feels like it ought to be wrapping up leads me to think I have no idea where this show is going. Which is kind of cool. I've also been watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because I'm way behind the times. And I'm on like my 13th rewatch of Community or something. That's kind of perpetual. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by 1Password Extended Access Management. Learn more at onepassword.com slash macOS can. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOS can. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. And Jesus wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer.